So, hello, good morning. A um, bit of a lab update here. So, um, as some of you know, I'm working on a new inverter design. Um, so basically, this is my old inverter that has been serving me for three years now. And never gone wrong. Um, <coughs> it uses the normal mainboard. It uses a normal current sensor board on the other side and it uses the regular gate drivers. It's even the old version uh, with just 2.5 amp drive current. And those drive um, large Semicron IGBT bricks, 1200 volts, 400 amps. And yeah, if those capacitors and, and snows in place. And a large heatsink, and it all works very nice. But I'm thinking it's a bit oversized. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, these are 400 amp continuous modules, but the max motor current is more like 100 amps. Yeah, so actually, mm, this is now almost three years ago. I came up with the idea I should design a power stage around TO247 parts in here. It's actually MOSFETs, but IGBTs look just the same. TO247. Um, yeah, so there's been um, a couple of evolution updates. The first try was like all in one board, and that proved a bit difficult to mount on the heatsink. And then, oh, where did I put my history lesson parts? Okay, found them. So, the first version was like that. Um, it used a dedicated low side driver that can only do low side and a high side driver. And um, yeah, then it turned out the low side driver wasn't actually 5 volts input but 15 volts. And uh, yeah, this design wasn't too good because all the current has to go through these traces. So I made another version, that would be version 2, and this was um, designed to be, the DC bus would be connected by standoffs, brass standoffs. <coughs> it turns out brass standoffs have, uh, I think, three times higher resistance than those alloy um, pipes that I will show you in detail. Yeah, so um, also this version had um, a current sensor, the Nexus current sensor on it. And new driver chips, Infineon driver chips, and the same part for both the high side and low side. And it also introduced, um, because that's the, the driver allows it sort of um, natively to use separate resistors for turn on and turn off. That's very useful for IGBTs. Um yeah, so what both of these have in common, uh, the off voltage for the IGBTs was 0 volts and the on voltage 15. And that turned out to be a problem, um, because when the high side IGBT switches on, there's a very fast rise in voltage on the low side collector. And that couples uh, through the miller capacitance onto the low sides gate, and even though that's pulled low with a low impedance, um, that was still enough to switch it on for a brief moments, so you would actually get shoot through. So I put this actual version in the car at 330 volts, um, front pack removed, and it wouldn't even spin the motor. It was so bad um, that uh, it just made strange noises, and in the end uh, one of the IGBTs burned and that was the end of that. Yeah, so I figured you do need a negative gate drive on the low side. Um, on the high side it's not such a problem because nothing just... the collector is at a constant voltage, right? So it's, it's not going to just randomly switch on. Um, so I introduced um, some negative gate drive on the low side, which isn't too hard. So now there's two DC-DC converters, one's 5 volts and one's 15. 5 volts uh, is pretty convenient because you can also power the logic section from that. 
don't need a separate um, set a separate 5 volt regulator, 15 to 5, <coughs> doesn't need it. Yeah, so that's the main difference on this one. Um, there's negative gate drive, and I've moved the drivers a bit closer to the gates, but not sure if that's such a key aspect. And it still has some Lexus front sensor, obviously. And it's got the big, the big M6 holes again for the bus bar connection. Um, yeah, because it will be like a long threaded rod serving uh, plus as an, an alloy pipe serving as a bus. Yeah, so the mission is to replace this old trusty unit by this new unknown unit. And um, it actually requires some extra work in the car. And this used to have this huge um, Harting connector um, for interfacing with the various signals in the car, and that will not fit this case so well. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of I could put it here, but I don't know, it, it's just not it's a little oversized as well. So, I will be replacing it. And again, I'm not finding stuff. Oh, here, let's be replacing it with that 26 way things called Super Seal connector. So it will go here. Yeah. So yesterday I tested this unit in the car and it didn't go well, but better than last time. So at least um, I could spin the motor and I could even drive up and down the driveway a bit, which has an angle, so it even goes uphill. But uh, the interference from the power section to the logic section, and probably also into this long ribbon cable, uh, was so bad that the encoder signal was badly disturbed, and um, yeah, the modem would, would more or less rock about instead of just spinning smoothly. As soon as you engaged a gear. Um, yeah, so what I'm also going to do is I will kind of bend this sheet metal to go around the logic section and sort of shield it off from the all the power a bit. It's actually the same as happening here, this is also shielded. Yeah, and also one thing that I found out, um, you know, this is a, a simple grid filter, LC grid filter. And this also used to live <coughs> in here. I sort of fixed it to this capacitor right here, and it was supposed to do the grid filtering for the integrated charging feature. And it did do so for like two hours, and after those two hours, it looked like that. So it seems I've done a bad job uh, designing those traces. They are too narrow, and uh, yeah, that's what happens when they're too narrow. Kind of burned up. It's also it's looking very good. This is what it was mounted to. And yeah. All right. So should be enough introduction. I'll make the changes to that. Make the changes in the car, um, like changing the Harting connector to the Super Seal, and then we'll see how it goes. So one step further. We have the Super C connector all wired up and we have some shielding in place. So today is the third time this is strapped into the car. Um, yeah, so the first time the motor wouldn't even spin. The second time it would spin, but eventually this and that happened. So, it, yeah, the, the face, uh, the AC line filter caused some sort of short. Okay, so now it's all fixed. I have replaced that. That's. Um, the rotor encoder that gives the rotor feedback and I've replaced it with a push-pull type and here I'm 
sort of moving from the large Harting connector to the small super seal connector. Have to clean up a bit. Yeah, so um, let's see what it does. I'll just start up. Obviously, we have a reduced battery voltage. Okay, pre-charge, okay. That's okay. Take it out of gear. And of course it started raining again, so let's hope nothing got wet. It shouldn't. Give it some throttle. Here is my throttle. And there we can see the motor spinning. I try not to be in the way of it. Hope no explosions. Oh yes. Good. So let's see if we can get some movement. Idle spinning motor only tells us so much. Running car is really the next step. Let's roll backward a bit and try to go back up. It's pulling. Oh, yeah, we're going. Ah, yeah, we're going back up. Beautiful. And back down again. Brakes haven't seen much movement in the last couple of weeks. Make terrible noises. And yeah, let's try going back up. Is it? It's pulling. Oh no. Oh yeah, we're going. Come on. Yeah. So that's a good start. Okay, so <clears throat> I would like to do a test drive today, but for that I'd have to really set up the car to be drivable again. And it's drizzling outside, it's just not, not the best time of the year to get stuff done outside. So then I have to wait. So for now I will conclude this experiment. Lessons learned. So the first version, like I said earlier, of this power board um, didn't have negative gate drive. To shut down the IGBT it would just connect it to ground and that was it. And that turned out to be insufficient. Um, I also made some minor changes which I'm not sure if they had any influence. Uh, I've moved the gate drivers a bit closer to the IGBTs. Um, I've changed the gate resistors. Um, I think the turn on was too fast, so you get um, you get spikes. And I uh, know the turn off. So when they turned off, these are fast switching IGBTs, so they turned off so rapidly that you would get excessive ringing or spikes on the AC output. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, one more uh, change here is that there is a separate connection from the IGBT's emitter here. Hope you can focus, you can see it. And here, back to the gate drivers. And we don't rely on the ground plane for, for the return path. Because that has voltage drop on it. And it's generally not advised to use it. Yeah, so um, yeah, negative gate drive you can see on the old version. There we have an old one right here. There's just one DC DC converter, 15 volts. This new version has two.
So next lesson learned um, is on the AC line filter. So both of that that I put in use um, had burned traces, so the traces are too narrow, I need to make them wider for the next version. And then this one burned for a different reason, because the output of the rectifier is connected to a phase input. And that should be okay, because it's, it's a non it's a diode in reverse direction, but of course that also has limited um, breakdown voltage and it seems we have gone over that and the rectifier conducted when it shouldn't. So yeah, I'll have to see um, how to solve that, maybe just the rectifier with a larger um, breakdown voltage will solve the problem. It certainly worked with that kind of rectifier in the old inverter because it switches slower. So that might be a reason. Yeah, what else? The isolator. Even the new version still has a bit of a problem. This very last pin here is uh, the under voltage lockout and it's not being used. For anything, so I just tied it to 5 volt, which was a bad idea because it goes directly into the STM32 in one of the non 5 volt tolerant pins. So, what happens uh, through the body diodes of the processor? It injects um, a current and that raises the, the operating voltage from the 3.3 that we want to 4 volts and I'm just glad I didn't break any processors in that but certainly the ADC starts going crazy and yeah everything is just becoming a bit weird. So I just cut the trace and that's solved. And then one thing that I didn't quite expect but it's completely logical um, the you know, you can hold them side by side. This is on the left? Well, this one. That's the old mainboard and that had discrete transistors um, for the digital outputs and no freewheeling on board. On the new mainboard I've replaced it with that, the ULN203 um, and that has an integrated freewheeling diode connected to each pin and then with the common cathode you can connect that to your supply voltage and it will freewheel, which is great. Um, but what happened in my car, obviously the main board's 12 volt is switched, so when I turn the key switch the inverter is powered up and starts to do its thing. Um, but when it's off the 12 volt is just floating somewhere. Um, the contactors are connected to a permanent 12 volt source. So what happens is the 12 volt goes through the contactor, through the freewheeling diode and onto my 12 volt supply. So it sort of parasitically switches on the inverter but not really. So what happened is the contactors would sort of randomly switch on. Um, the, in the instrument cluster the you know, the arrow lights and the battery, low battery warning lights would like dimly glow. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, and then I realized what was going on. So, on the mainboard that's in the car right now, I cut the freewheeling diode pin on the ULN because I'm freewheeling directly at the contactors anyway, so it's not really needed. So that's just important for your conversion. If you want to use integrated freewheeling diodes, you have to connect your contactors to the same switch 12 volt source as your inverter. I hope that's always possible. Otherwise, cut the pin. Yeah, so I think this concludes um, this experiment for now. I will certainly do a test drive. But I'm thinking this is going to be next year because I'm away for Christmas, can't work on the car. So yeah, see you then when I'm test driving. Thanks for watching.